This medicine was supposed to help Lisa Bussino's mother lose weight. Instead, she died. It's as if her heart exploded. She had an acute pulmonary edema within 15 minutes. She couldn't breathe and there was white and pink foam coming out of her nose. The paramedics worked for 45 minutes to revive her, but she was gone. The drug mediator is manufactured by one of France's biggest pharmaceutical companies, Servier, and it had been on the market since 1976. A doctor first reported its potentially deadly effects in 2007. We have been waiting for this criminal trial for years. The majority of the investigation was completed in 2014, so it's been an endless and unbearable wait for the victims and myself, especially because of an endless denial of responsibility by the laboratory. Until the drug was suspended in 2009, it was prescribed to more than 5 million people. Doctors have confirmed that at least 500 of them died of cardiac arrest brought on by its use. And a further 1,500 died due to other health complications related to the drug. Doctors worry it's left many others with permanent health problems. Servier has agreed to pay $145 million in settlements to the families of those who died after using Mediator. Now it's being accused of conniving with regulators to keep the drug on shelves despite knowing about the risks it posed to the patients. The laboratory deliberately lied and concealed the dangerous properties of Mediator, which is the reason for this trial. But we also want to show that the health authorities are also responsible for not withdrawing Mediator from the markets early enough. The drug company does not deny the harm its product has inflicted on users, but it says there's been no deliberate foul play. This accusation is intolerable for server laboratories. There is no motive for it. It's a drug that made less than 1% of the company's sales. The trials building pressure on the government to overhaul health and safety regulations. The families of mediator users who have died say such changes are long overdue. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. And Mobin joins me here in the studio for more on this. Hi, Mobin. Now, we know this death is being blamed or at least linked to up to 2,000 deaths in France. Do we know what exactly caused these fatalities? So the active ingredient here is a substance called Benflorex. Now, a bit of a history lesson. Back in the 70s, there was only one company that was producing weight loss products for diabetics. And that company is what is now known as Pfizer. It was making a killing in that market. And so Servier decided to get into the same uh, business. They did that by developing a very similar uh, product as to their competitors using Benflorex. Now, at that time, it was known that this product causes respiratory and cardiac problems. But the probability of that was deemed low enough to allow this substance to be used. The problem is that this medicine combines that with another substance uh, and that together made this lethal cocktail which greatly increased the risks uh, from this product. Now, interestingly enough, Pfizer actually stopped making that product in the 90s, in 1997 to be precise, when it was established uh, through various clinical trials that this was in fact leading to, uh, if not deaths, then definitely health problems. So it is alleged that this company knew uh, at least by 1997, if not earlier, that these two active ingredients in their product were in fact harmful for users. Interesting. We also know that this trial is a long time coming, isn't it? Uh, it's been a good decade since problems with this drug first emerged. But prosecutors say the blame just doesn't lie with this uh, drug company, Servio. Who else are prosecutors blaming? So it's a very interesting case, especially because most of these kind of cases that when we come across them, they're usually in the US and they usually stick to only the corporate entities. That is not the case here. There are 21 defendants in all. That includes Servier, it also includes the, the French drug regulator, but it also nominates 14 people individually. That includes a former vice president of the company, a number of civil servants, a former senator, and a pediatrician who was uh, on a retainer for Servier. Uh, and again, as you know, there are more than 2,600 plaintiffs here, uh, and this case is expected to last uh, as long as at least seven months. But really, uh, what is perhaps a watershed here and might lead to 
problems for big pharma in the future if, if similar cases emerge is this whole idea of personal liability and holding individuals liable for the damages caused to, to the users. Now, Servia is obviously fighting these charges in court. It says it had, it had no motive to lie about this drug because it generates very little revenue for the company as a whole. What else is part of their defence? Well, of course, the, the fact that the, the drug itself generates not much revenue is, is a side issue, really, isn't it? Because we know that any company that is tarnished, who's especially a pharma company, if even one of their products are, is tarnished, that would affect their entire bottom line. So it's really, that sounds like a frivolous argument. But the prosecution here is also focusing on that 2007 report, which said that it was as early as the 1970s that the company knowingly concealed the medic medication's true characteristics. Uh, and we know that b after that initial judgment in 2007, there were some changes to the law. Uh, in 2011, France tried to make its, uh, the, the regulatory body for the pharma sector uh, more strict. Uh, it, made laws about, um, it made laws about how they were allowed to market things. But there are a lot of other issues that the prosecution is pointing towards. For example, the revolving door between big pharma and regulators. A lot of the people who are mandated with regulating these companies can actually end up with uh, much better paying jobs at these companies. So really, this has the potential of really hitting at, that, at the entire sort of regulatory system, at the overall healthcare system, and could lead to some, uh, one would hope, reforms that will keep these kind of cases from coming up in the future. Okay, let's see how the trial unfolds. Mobunasa, thanks for your analysis.